And then um, I'm going to demonstrate command and control with Gmail, basically using excellent uh, Python utility GCAT. And I'm going to package it up in Veil to make a Windows executable for the payload. And we're going to use that to take control of a Windows 8 target. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Dick Veal, as you can see there. And I'm going to be using Kali 2 to do this. So let's go ahead and get started and clone the git repository into our slash op directory. Grab the whole thing down. See the in there and take a look. So this is our basic top level. We've got the GCAT, which is your control. You've got implant, which is your payload. And uh, let's go take a look at the readme. Get an idea of what we need to do to set this up. Uh, you've got some nice example commands and stuff you can do there. It's running commands, grabbing screenshots, listing clients, uh, the sort of commands you can run there. You've got uploading uh, new executables or shellcode, taking screenshots and so on. Uh, what we really want though is how we're actually going to set this up to work with our Gmail account. So let's go take a look at the top here quickly. So it says, you know, use a dedicated account. So uh, we're going to have to go ahead and set up a, a new Gmail account. And you have to enable IMAP in the account settings. So let's head on over to Gmail. Register ourselves a nice new address that we can use as our C2 box. As mentioned, it's Richard Veal, so... Uh, Let's go for Dick Veal. And I'll use Dick Veal GCAT as my email address. Just to make it a bit obvious what I'm actually going to be using this address for. Okay, so here we are in the Gmail mailbox. Just need to change the settings to allow us to enable IMAP. So uh, forwarding and pop slash IMAP. And there you've got IMAP is currently disabled. So let's just enable that. Go ahead and save those changes. Make sure there's nothing else I've got to enable here quickly. I think that'll do it. Okay, so we're back at the mailbox. Right, uh, so uh, as you can see, this repo contains two files, a script that's used to enumerate engineer commands, so that's basically your, uh, your, your server, your controller, and your implant.py, which is your backdoor, i.e. the payload that we're going to deploy to our Windows box. So, let's uh, via the uh, implants, which is our payload. Look for the Gmail user and Gmail password. So there you go, I've filled in my leaked password there for my gcat account at gmail and of course we need to do the same thing on the server element and allow the two to talk to each other so there we go right what i'm going to use now is the veil framework an excellent uh, antivirus evasion utility i'm sure many of you are familiar with um, one of the great things this can do is package up uh, Python, Ruby, all sorts of different things into uh, beautiful executables that we can then use on Windows boxes. Uh, so let's go ahead and use number two here, which is our native Python uh, auxiliary Py installer wrapper. Um, I'm going to leave it on 32 bit architecture because that's what's recommended for GCAT. Uh, we need to set the Python source to the implant, which is our, as mentioned previously, our payload. That's what we're going to be compiling into an executable to run on our client. And that's pretty much all we have to change here, so let's go ahead and generate that. Uh, it's asking for a base name, so we'll leave that as payload. I think I've already got a couple called payload, so it's probably going to call it something else. Uh, yeah, we're going to stick with the default Py installer because that uh, generally tends to work quite well. Vale's going to go ahead and chuck out a load of output now, telling us the sort of stuff he's doing. Uh, it's going to package it all into one file as well, which is always nice. Uh, one night, you know, you don't have to deploy any uh, anything other than that single executable to your target. So there we go. Payload's been generated, and uh, it's dumped into this directory. So we'll go and have a look at this now. Exit out of Vale. 
So let's see what Vale has generated for us here. Okay, so that's uh, worked nicely. We go into the compiled uh, directory of Vale because that's obviously where it's dumped the actual executable. And payload 2 should now exist. There it is. Uh, let's just go ahead and make sure that is the right sort of file that we're looking for. There you go, uh, P32 and uh, MS Windows. So I've switched over to my the desktop of the system that I'm going to compromise right here. As you can see, payload2.exe uh, I've uploaded to the box and I've put a nice notepad there to prove that this is my desktop. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let's fire up uh, GCAT. I've executed the payload2 on my box and there we go. GCAT.py, the server element, has now picked up the, the client. The two have linked into Gmail and I can now control this system using GCAT as my uh, sort of remote access to uh, server. So let's issue some commands, see what sort of stuff we can get out of here. So I pass in the ID of the client. Obviously if you've got multiple clients you know you need a unique specifier. And let's just uh, take a basic screenshot. Every time you do uh, run one of these commands um, it's going to give you a job ID. So here you can see, I, I've jumped forward a little bit here but you can see um, uh, we've got three different job IDs here. I sent it the IP config command and I took two screenshots. Uh, once you've got your job ID, you then have to specify your ID and the job ID of what you're trying to retrieve. And here I, you can see I'm trying to retrieve the two uh, screenshots that I've taken. So it's saying the screenshot saved to dot slash data and then the ID and uh, dot PNG. So there we go. I'm just going to retrieve the IP conf config uh, that I ran on the box as well. Let's see uh, this nice demo of, of you know uh, sort of starting to take over the box. So now you can see I've got some internal IP addresses here, some nice VMware MAC addresses and uh, tunnel adapters and so on. So uh, this could be great for pivoting into a, into an environment where you've only got uh, SMTP or IMAP outbound on your firewall. You know it's great for a slightly more restricted environment if you're trying to do some command and control. So let's go take a look at some screenshots that I've taken and see if it's worked. Uh, so I'm just going to browse through just using the basic file manager here. And there you go. We've got some screenshots that we've retrieved from the box. Um, it looks like they've got a little bit screwed up. And uh, let's load one for a minute. Well, you can see uh, the word, uh, there's, it hasn't rendered it perfectly. Uh, I might need to have a look into why it's done that. But uh, as you can see, it's actually... I mean, there's my VMware window in front of it, and uh, there's the you know the, the the desktop behind. So seems to have worked. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. As you can see, my Twitter handle Dickville. Feel free to get in touch, and uh, hopefully uh, a few more videos for you guys in the future.